A couple years ago, it wasn't much of a debate. People thought about moving to Vancouver, and some did, obviously, but Portland was the place to be. That has kind of reversed. More people are actually starting to choose Vancouver. In fact, there's a lot of Portland people moving up to Vancouver, and it is blowing up. But what I want to do in this video, I'm actually going to be pulling up the map. I'm going to top, talk about the top five areas of Vancouver versus the top five areas of Portland. What I want to do in this video is talk about the major differences that you'll see so that you're going to figure out which area you're actually going to like to live, but most importantly, an area that you might hate living. So if you want to learn that, we're getting after it right now. What's up, everybody? Jackson Wilkie here with the Real Agent Now Group right here in the Portland Metro. If this is your first time to this channel and you want to learn everything about what it's like to work, eat, sleep, live, play, and the difference between Vancouver and Portland, well, make sure you tap that subscribe button, click the bell so you're notified every time we do a new video. We honestly get so many phone calls, emails, texts every day from people moving, and we absolutely love it. So thinking about moving anywhere in Portland or Vancouver, make sure you give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email. Days, nights, weekends, we got your back when moving to the Portland Metro. Well, the Portland Metro, that also means Clark County, Washington, which is just up to the north of us. Sometimes the drive in between the two can be absolutely brutal. We're gonna be talking about that. So what I wanna do, we're gonna slip over to the map and I'm gonna show you these areas and tell you stories of them so that you can find that perfect spot or the spot you're not gonna like. Let's go. All right, so as you are seeing here on the map, I've got it zoomed out quite a ways, um, but we actually have Vancouver right here. And we have Portland, Oregon. That there is the Columbia River. So that is what separates uh, Vancouver from Portland, Oregon. And then you got the Willamette River that runs south right here. And that's what separates uh, east and west Portland. So just so you have your bearings straight. What I want to do, we'll actually start uh, up to the north here and we'll work our way down. Look, folks, Vancouver is something that, you know, we've been talking about on this channel for over two plus years. Obviously, it is starting to erupt. There's little pocket areas that I'm going to talk about today. You're going to want to know about, even if you're thinking about Portland, th this could, per you know, persuade you or change your mind. But again, I want to talk about kind of the differences that you see. So with that being said, the major difference that we see, obviously, two different states, Washington, Oregon. Down here in Oregon, you're going to see no sales tax. You're going to see higher income tax. Up to the north here in Washington, you are going to see no state income tax, uh, but you will have higher sales tax, a lot higher sales tax. Um, people always ask, well, can I just live up here in Washington and then I'll work down in Portland and I'll have no income tax? Nope, doesn't work that way. If you live up here and you work in Oregon, you're going to be paying that Oregon state income tax. So there is really no way to get around that. But with this being said, um, Vancouver, when we started vlogging it, and, and you guys can go see basically any vlog, we've, we've gone and walked the streets and showed you these areas. But I wanna st start talking about a few things. Uh, when people think about Vancouver, they're always looking right here. Back even just a couple of years ago, there was nothing down there. I mean, obviously there's the downtown, there's a cool farmer's market and some restaurants. We actually started showing homes, um, condos right downtown for this couple about three years ago. And I remember being there, I'm like, dude, this just sucks. There's like nothing here compared to Portland. It's like so much better down there. Um, that's changed. In just three years time, this waterfront right here, um, it just went away as I um, zoomed in. This south waterfront right here has so many different shops, restaurants, bars. There's all new condos right here. And what it's done is completely just spiced up this whole area. It's full of breweries, tacos, um, not just tacos, but taquerias. <laughs> There's not just tacos everywhere. Um, and this right here, the Esther Short Park, this holds a massive farmer's market on Saturdays. It's really becoming a cool place. I was just having a conversation with one of my friends um, uh, two days ago, and he's like, man, I'm sitting here having a glass of vino overlooking the Columbia. This south waterfront is one of the coolest things now. I agree. They got a huge kitty splash pad. So Vancouver's like, you know what? We're going to pick up our game. So many people are moving here. Um, so really a lot of people, they're not moving right downtown. It's a little bit more rare. What we're seeing is people are picking a few spots. One right here. This is probably the number one spot to live in Vancouver. Um, and it's, uh, Camas, Camas, Washington. This is Lackamas Lake. As you can see, I can switch the, uh, layers here. 
If you go, this is all, I mean, you're into the middle of woods. So some of the best hiking, you can see the Washougal uh, MX Park. They got some really, really cool stuff, motorcycling. In fact, the amount of trails and miles of just bike trails just outside of Vancouver is, is shocking. Um, but Lacamas Lake is just that gorgeous, like picturesque Northwest living. You got the lake, you got the mountains, you get the trees. Um, so if, if you can, you know, be that far from things, that's where you're going to want to be. But I'll, I'll go back to the layers here. I want to talk about a few things. About two and a half years ago, we were doing some vlogs and we went up to Ridgefield, Washington, and you can go watch this tiny dinky little town and we talked in that video of hey this we feel is the new hot spot we were already seeing starting to see the trends this is way 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 you know three years ago way pre-covid way pre just massive boom um and this is a little town that you kind of go into cute whatever but they were starting to build a lot of new construction and those homes were like three hundred thousand back then and we were like man you can get so much more of a home here but it does put you far north well Nowadays, we're having, you know, homes basically starting at 550 and I mean, you can't even really find anything for 600. So these are the areas that are just erupting. This has the, the ability, I think, in the next little while to really be the next or better than, you know, Lackham or uh, Camus. So um, the other one we talked about was Philida, another cute little town. It's got a rad little downtown area. These are the places that we're starting to see just really, really blow up. This I-5 right here to get to downtown super quick. You have the, uh, and I always butcher it, but like the Illini uh, Casino, it's right here. So you have massive concerts, all that stuff. And you know, there are the, the downtown scenes here starting to get really fun with independent shops, restaurants, bars, breweries, whatever. But that's where people are stretching their dollar. Again, back in the day, we were helping clients, you know, Salmon Creek, Five Corner, these areas, uh, Brush Prairie. I mean, we had a client buy five acres brand new construction house for like four hundred and ninety thousand dollars out here it's not happening anymore and i remember it used to be a drive to get out there just three years ago of nothing but farm fields you're still going to see it but the construction is starting to work out one massive difference that you'll see between vancouver washington and portland oregon is the urban growth boundary that you see in portland there's actually a border you can look it up where that is voted on every 10 years um, to expand for more new construction. So it's a little bit more difficult to, you know, build new homes uh, in Portland. It's it's not as landlocked, obviously, in Vancouver. And everything is starting to go up to the north. So there's a lot of space and farm fields and growth here in the Washington side of things. So if you're looking for more acreage, more space, you know, you're going to start coming up around these areas here to get more of that space um, and, and stretch the dollar. The other thing, you know, if you look online, again, this is why we love having the reach outs. When people are moving and buying houses, they'll go on to niche.com. They'll look at all these websites and like, well, the number one place to live says it's right. You know, Fisher's Landing and Bennington and all that. It's all right here. It's kind of older. Um, we like we rarely, rarely, rarely have anybody ever moving to those areas. It's basically, you know, Camas, some of these major areas that have all the new construction like Salmon Creek. Um, and you know, all, all the way up to Brush Prairie, but Philida and Ridgefield, I'm just telling you, once they see it, they're like, yep, that's it. So a lot of times the, the websites and stuff that you read, they're not even written by locals and they just kind of go out there and look at statistics. It's all feel at the end of the day. This is why we've helped over 200 clients move, relocate and find the perfect spots because we hear you out and then we go, okay, we got a spot for you. So you're going to read some stuff here and there. It may be misleading just to, just to broadly go over it that was really you know vancouver is you have those hot spots that you want to kind of look at um especially more suburb living the condo living you know on this area there's you know you can live right along the river here there's a concrete path that you can walk all the way along and i remember a couple clients were like you know what that would be amazing just walk along this beautiful river every day um, as you get through you know down over to here there's some really nice condos and stuff some of the hoas are outrageously expensive so you got to watch out for that um but I, I can tell you right now ridgefield's an area that you're probably going to want to you know be looking at as well as camas uh salmon creek some of these areas so with that being said what happens is um this is i5 absolute disaster if you're trying to go through rush hour um in the mornings coming down that is just gridlocked going up to the north in the mornings isn't as bad but it's still pretty bad. You have no like 
uh, they're, they're talking about, they've been talking about it forever, getting like, you know, like the max or a train to go across here, but it's not happening and both states aren't budging. But right now, that's basically what you have, or you got to cruise all the way over here to the um, east side here and hit the 205. So that's why a lot of people do enjoy living over Camas, Washougal, you know, some of these areas, because they can come here to the 205 and head into Portland. This, this is usually never near as bad as I-5. It looks like it's super close on the map. Like, oh, why doesn't everybody just go over here? That's a long ways out of the way if you need to go up north this way to head over to the 205 and, and then back over. So you just don't see it. And I-5 can be just an absolute mess. So, you know, we're seeing people work from home more. We're seeing people not having to travel as much. And it's not a big deal. If you hit this non-rush hour, you're going to you're gonna breeze right through it, 50, 60 miles an hour, haul ass. And so to get you know, uh, from Vancouver to downtown Portland, it's only like 10 minutes, you know, it doesn't take long at all. In fact, we did a video, if you want to go search it out, the, um, the Portland, Oregon traffic. And we, we did that drive during rush hour to just show you how long it takes and what it looks like. Um, so you'll, you'll be able to see that. So if you come south of the river here and you, and you head into the PDX, um, a couple areas worth noting. And, and obviously, you guys, for the most part, know Portland, you know, Beaverton, but I want to talk about some of these areas like, like I did up in Vancouver that you're not really hearing about where, are, you know, these 200 plus clients that we've helped move here, what are they gravitating towards? Because they're like, oh my God, I had no idea that existed. Well, I would say one of the number one areas that um, we're seeing um, is, is this Happy Valley area. Again, if you have to work like downtown or you're working out on the West side Beaverton, like where Nike is or Intel, you're not going to want to live over in Happy Valley. It's going to take you forever to get there. Brutal traffic. But a lot of people, again, working from home or they only need to get in once or twice a week. It's not as big of a deal. We, um, I call this like the, the, you know, Pleasantville. I remember the first time I went over to Happy Valley. I didn't even know this place existed, right? And I went over there with Jesse, our, our business partner on this channel, and he was showing me some of it. And I just, I was driving with him and I'm like, God, I wish I had known this place was here. Like, it's so gorgeous you hop off the 205 here and you drive all these roads this is all up in the mountains it's it's all mountains uh and windy roads beautiful beautiful and the cool thing is if you zoom way out it's kind of hard to see on the map but um you actually have mount hood as you can see right there a lot of the uh neighborhoods and stuff in here are risen risen raisin ro i don't know rose up they they woke um they're they're, they're looking at Mount Hood. And so as you are in your incredible suburb with great schools and all these parks, uh, stretching that budget because it's not near as expensive as like Lake Oswego, yet you get all the beauty and you have incredible views of Mount Hood. A lot of the suburbs, you know, once you get into the valley side of things over here, um, those all have paths that tie together. So again, if it's not your style suburb living and being over there, then you're not going to like it. But if you're like, yeah, I really want that nice, safe area that's beautiful, look at Happy Valley. Um, the, one of the craziest things, I remember when I moved to um, Portland, you know, reside obviously in the southwest, this this um, area around here, blowing up. This is the, that urban growth boundary that I just talked about is expanding and thousands and thousands and thousands of new homes are going in this area. This is gorgeous. I love this Roy Rogers road. It takes you, you know, right into Sherwood here. It's all farm fields. There's wineries right here. My wife goes to, I mean, tons of wineries. It is agriculture fields, pumpkin patches, beautiful farms. And so what they're going to do is they're going to start building on the side of Bull Mountain here, a lot of new homes. So see a big growth pattern happening here. It's uh, going to have its own Progress Ridge. This is called Progress Ridge. 50 different shops, restaurants, bars, tap houses, movie theaters, bowling alleys, you name it. Uh, they're going to have one from what they say their own here. So this area, super, super popular. Hillsboro, Oregon right here is probably seeing some of the highest appreciation. This is where all the tech companies are going. This is coined the Silicon Forest. Um, the Max actually runs out this far to Hillsboro. So the Max can take you all the way to downtown Portland, all the way up to the airport. Um, but Hillsboro is an area to, to where we're seeing some of the highest appreciation on homes. Again, what I was getting at when I moved here, Hillsboro was just old. Like it was just an old area. It wasn't much going on there. Uh, and now it's, it's definitely one of the hottest areas, this whole area in between Hillsboro into Beaverton. Sorry, everything's popping up in Aloha. This is where the mass new construction is going. 
This reserve right here uh, is a golf course. Gorgeous, incredible homes. In fact, they did the, uh, what is it, Parade of Homes. They did it here um, just two years ago or whatever. So um, very, very nice homes and all new construction, all new schools. And this whole area right here is uh, Cooper Mountain. So it's a big mountain system. You can see right here, actually, Cooper Mountain Nature Park. So all the hiking trails that you could you know think about. So you have Hillsboro, kind of this valley here, and you have this area that's a valley, and it's separated by a giant mountain that has hiking trails. That's the beauty of some of these areas that, again, you're not going to know this before moving here. Again, you got to tell us two, three things you like, you don't like, and we can go, yeah, actually this neighborhood is exactly what you're talking about. So, um, that's what we absolutely love. And as I zoom out again, you know, we talked about some of the major areas, happy Valley on the, on the Southeast side here, Hillsboro on the West side. And then obviously your can't miss areas are, are Lake Oswego, West Lynn, Lake Oswego is going to be one of the most expensive areas that you find in Portland, Oregon. But if you just are like, I don't care. I want the nicest. I want best schools. I want the safest. I want it. Just look at Lake Oswego, you know, tough to get into highest price points, but that's where those people are going. What's happening is we're starting to stretch South Tualatin, great little area. It's got a shopping center with 200 plus malls. Again, we've done a vlog of most of these areas so you can see them. Um, but I love Tualatin. It's you can actually see that paddleboard right there that cuts right through the park. There's a skate park there. I take the kiddos to all the time. You can paddleboard on the river and that carves right through the neighborhoods. It's gorgeous. But another area I wanted to touch on here was uh, Wilsonville. This again, um, it's going to be kind of separate from everything else. It's its own little community. Now it's completely self-sustained with shops, restaurants, got Costco's um, and they have incredible new construction homes going in there. So you'll be able to stretch the budget a little bit more as well. Those are really areas that are, are starting to get very popular with people moving here. Um, and that's really what I wanted to to talk about today was just kind of those major differences that you see. Um, and and it, it just boils down to, to lifestyles, right? You may um, not have to drive anywhere. And so you're okay going to a Wilsonville or, um, you know, over to, you know, the T Tualatins or Sherwood and you don't need to be close. Or on the east side, you know, you can head out to Happy Valley. Um, if you're more just like, nope, I want that Portland lifestyle, everything that I see on the TV, whatever. Um, it's really this whole Northeast Southeast area. Um, there, you know, especially like the Hawthorns, you know, Hawthorne, all of that, Belmont, these areas are just crazy, crazy, crazy right now too, with the, with, with people loving them, because this is like your ultimate, you know, walk to everything, get home from work, have hundreds of independent shops, all the James Beard winning restaurants and, and chefs. I've gone to a restaurant here where it, they can only serve two tables. You're sitting in between two cooks and they bring you a five course meal. It was one of the coolest experiences ever. It's in this like little tiny side building. There's breweries everywhere. You have Mount Tabor, which is one of our family's favorite hikes. You can get way up into the mountains and, and go look at all these trees and, and uh, parks and playgrounds. The kids love it. Come right on down and, and you know, hit a, hit a, hit a brewery or something with the kiddos. So um, it just really depends on the style of house and living that you're looking at because it can, it can be vastly different. If you get into Irvington, this is like, you know, a quarter acre lot, you know, it could be 4,000, 6,000 square foot home, couple million dollars. All the CEOs and executives live here. Um, or you go up north to the Alberta Arts District and it's like super, super funky and vibrant colors. And, uh, you know, they have the Alberta um, parade or not parade, but their their Saturday market, or whatever it's called. It's I've been there. It's a little little different. But, yeah, that's that's really um, what you're going to see on that northeast, southeast side. You know, I could probably spend another hour, two hours going through every one of these uh, different areas, but that's what this channel is about. We've got hundreds of videos where we're out there with the camera telling you and showing you. That's what differentiates and separates us from everybody. But at the end of the day, we're the number one relocation team for a reason because it's so competitive. There's 50 plus offers and we're getting our out-of-state buyers accepted because of our relocation process that we have mastered and that we love. You tell us two, three things you like, you don't like where you need to be. And again, we can go, yep. Here's a neighborhood that's exactly what you're talking about that you've never heard about. But the only way that we can help you do that is you have to reach out to us. You got to give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email, days, nights, weekends. We got your back when moving to both Vancouver and Portland, Oregon. Until the next video, guys, we'll catch you later.